Hello everyone and welcome back to another Apostles of Muchinjikwa podcast. My name is Masbaba Charles and the topic that we wish to discuss this week is regarding false teachings. What do I mean when I say false teachings? These are the teachings of which were given to us when the colonizers came at the very start of Christianity in Africa. And they came and they taught us that in order to be a good Christian, these are the stuff that you must follow and these are the fundamentals, these are the beliefs that you should have in order for you to qualify as a Christian. But at that time it was colonization and there was a hidden agenda to the things that they did. So, for example, we were taught that in this life you must suffer And the more you suffer, the more riches will be for you in heaven. And we were always taught the story of Lazarus and how Lazarus would beg and he would beg and he would beg. And until the day that he finally passed away, that was the day that he became a king. And so these were the sort of stories that were pushed onto us. And we were told that we must be like this. And then so we sort of started to take pride in our suffering. Because we started to believe the more that we suffered, then that meant the greater our riches would be in heaven. So you would see Africans within churches and they would not have anything but they would always give to the church. You would see Africans in churches and they wouldn't have clothes to wear, they wouldn't have jobs to work but they would be fine with that. They wouldn't complain, they wouldn't say much, they wouldn't strive for any more changes. And this is because this is what we were taught. So these are the kind of false teachings that we want to be able to tell people and to expose so that people can know that no, when you look at places like in Masowe, the people there know that we must work hard in life, that in order for us to have a clear a clear journey going to heaven, we need to have a good quality of life here on earth. Because the honest truth is, it will, it will be a struggle for you to pray to God if you are suffering. It will be a struggle for you because if you are unable to pay your rent and you are trying to pray, it's hard for you to pray wholeheartedly because while you are kneeling down and praying and offering worship to the Lord, you are busy thinking in your heart about the bills that you have to pay. You are thinking about your kids that you cannot feed, your kids that you cannot take to school, all this kind of stuff are troubling your spirit while you pray so it's hard for you to actually have some sort of meaningful prayers so these are the kind of things that we want to be able to teach people that no if you are a christian you must also have a good quality of life so that your spiritual life is taken care of as well so even if you look in the case of my story baba joani when they went to south africa baba joani said to them If you want to be able to carry this work of God and if you want to help me to do what the Holy Spirit is sending me to do, then you need to be able to to finance yourself. You need to be able to take care of your money matters. And they did this to the point where they were so successful in the art of making baskets that they became known as the Coston Basket Makers, which is an area that they were living in. And they that area became known due to the work that they were doing and how successful they were. So Baba Jawani was teaching us that no, if you are truly wanting to help to for the work of God to grow, then you must be able to have assets, have businesses, have resources that will enable the work of God to spread that even at the end when he passed away in 1973 there was the the place in Kenya, the the old embassy that was there and they bought that place and it became an asset for them that even now they have a place that they are able to pray. So these are just one of the false teachings that we feel that Africans have been given and if we're able to address these kind of things we'll be able to take changes that will take us um, positive steps in getting closer to God and also another thing that we were taught was that the white saviour complex 
When when I say the white savior complex, what do I mean by this? It is that um, Jesus is white. And when they came with the concept to us that Jesus is white, even though they knew he was not, but they gave us pictures of a white Jesus. And this was, it, it was intentional because if they had Africans or black people to perceive Jesus as a white male, then it also meant that when we looked at white people and when we looked at, at our colonizers, we saw a representation of God. So the issue here is not for me to discuss or to claim what color Jesus is or what color God is, but for me to bring awareness to the intention of having a white Jesus. And the reason for that was because that if we, whenever we see white people, we will not see them as our equals, but we will see them as our superiors. And this is one of the stuff that we want to be able to tackle. That even if you look in a place, I remember there was an actor who represented the white Jesus and he went to Africa. And when he went to Africa, I think it was Kenya, if I'm not mistaken. And when he went to that place, the people there, they were so amazed because he dressed in the old robes and he was wearing the sandals and he had his long hair. And people there were happy and they were praising and they were like, it's the second coming of Jesus. And that man was just an actor. Like, why, you know, scholars know that Jesus did not look like that. Historians know Jesus did not look like that. But there was a reason why they gave us that image. So this is sort of the stuff that we want to be able to tackle to get people to have their identity in Christ spiritually, not to see an image of someone who supposedly meant to represent Jesus, but to make sure that when we look at other people, we do not see them as the sole representation of God, but to realize that God is within all of us and we as humanity are equal to each other. And there is no one that was created by God to say that I will make them stand above all the other rest. And lastly, one teaching that I would just like to say was that in Masowe, we are a church that is spirit led, which means we are led by the Holy Spirit. When you look in other churches, there's there's no prophesizing, there's no visions, there's no messages from heaven. People just come and they read the Bible and they leave. But when you come to Masowe, you will see that it's completely different to the traditional churches that you see now. But for us, we believe that if you look at the traditional churches, the old ones, the first ones, the apostles, Peter and Paul, when they, when they, when they founded these churches... They were led by the Holy Spirit. When they were writing the Bible, they were led by the Holy Spirit. So at what point did the Holy Spirit just stop and leave us? At what point did these miracles no longer happen? So these are the stuff that we want to be able to tackle that. When you come into Masowe, do not be afraid or do not be surprised when you see the workings of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is alive today just as it was 2,000 years ago. The Spirit of God is still working miracles today as it was 2,000 years ago. And the Spirit is still teaching us. Because when the Holy Spirit went and said, I will send you a teacher, a comforter, who will be with you. And he will teach you things. And you shall know him because you have lived with him and you have ate with him. Which means that Jesus was going to send us his Spirit to look after us and to the time of his second coming. And so this means that for us as Christians, we have to truly believe in the Holy Spirit and believe in the works of the Holy Spirit. And it is alive today. That's why when you come to my soul, please come with an open mind and with an open heart and just take a, take a few moments to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And that will be the end of the topic for this week. I hope that he has been of some enlightenment to you and helping you in your journey to finding God. And with that, I wish to say thank you very much for listening and glory be to, be to God.